Hello loves. So today we are going to be doing an all signs solar eclipse reading. Um, and basically what that's going to look like is I'm going to, you know, give, go through Aries through Pisces and give one card per sign and spend a little bit of time on that card. Um, and what's coming up for me, what I'm feeling through that, through that message. Um, so yeah, solar eclipse in cancer. I believe it's happening tomorrow, June 21st. I don't know what else is really happening with the sky other than Mercury is going into Gatorade or has gone into Gatorade, retrograde, whatever you want to call it, uh, as of Thursday. Um, I don't, you know, ask an astrologer. Um, I, I focus mainly on tarot. I do, know a, I do know a fair bit about astrology, but I do not claim to be an astrologer. Um, so I'm going to do a solar eclipse reading and the deck that I'm going to be using is a deck that I used to use back in the day called the ghetto tarot. And basically it is this artist went to Haiti, um, and in an effort to, um, expand <laughs> our vision of the tarot cards and to add some melanin in there, she, um, took these photos of people in Haiti, um, and made them into the subjects of the tarot cards, right? And I guess for me, this is also a call <laughs> on whoever sees this, right? Within the tarot community, within the astrology community to, um, you know, put your money where your fucking mouth is, right? If, 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 if we're talking about love and light and, and, and we're all one and peace be upon all, then um, why am I not seeing more y'all out there on the front lines? Um, offering free services to black folks, um, you know, uh, using your platform that has thousands and thousands and thousands of followers and subscribers to talk about what's happening right in this country with black people and black bodies. Happy late Juneteenth to everybody out there. Um, celebrated Juneteenth yesterday. And yeah, so um, yeah, for hair readers and astrologers out there who are not black, um, and you have yet to really use your platform, um, you know, ask yourself why. And if you have what you feel are valid reasons, question those valid reasons too, right? Like I've been caught in that, in that, in that before where I'm like, oh, well, I have a valid reason for not doing that or doing this. And then I actually question that valid reason. And I'm like, actually that reason also is bullshit. So let's get into the reading. So let's start out with Aries. Um, a card for Aries for the June 2020 solar eclipse in Cancer. Your favorite sign. <laughs> Every Aries that I need is like, I can't stand Cancers. I think y'all are square Cancer, so that makes, makes a lot of sense. This is, you know, not your favorite season. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm going to take this card. Okay, Temperance. Yeah, so um, a call for, and I push for patience. Um, if you are, are dealing with a situation right now, if you are dealing with a Sagittarius, especially, or another fire sign, um, I would say even a water sign, that the situation is calling upon for you to have patience and to have the willingness to weigh things out. Um, and you all are very, very, very good. Your forte is jumping in with both feet, right? And as you can see with this image here, she is gently dipping her toe into the pool whilst also sort of balancing out the energies and synergizing these two cups. So this is about a relationship that's not moving as fast as you want it to. And I think we discussed this in your mid-June reading that a need for patience, that there needs to be some sort of injection of patience into how you deal with things right now, especially your love life. Um, Sagittarians also have the capacity to be very healing for you. Sagittarius friends, Sagittarius family members, um, even lovers can be places of peace and sustenance for you right now. Um, so yeah, I would just say whatever it is you've got going on, whatever it is you are... Um, sort of trying to beat the punch at, mm, the, you, need to, you need to sort of wait a little bit, especially if it's about decisions. And now that we've hit Mercury in retrograde, um, you are definitely going to need to probably wait a, the three week period if you can. If you can't, do the best that you can and um, 
you know, the powers that be will help you to fix up any spills or messes that come our way, right? Because sometimes, you know, I've had, you know, I've been told, don't do this during when Mercury goes in Gatorade. And I'm like, well, I have to, I can't, you know. And so the best, the best line of defense is to just really be mindful, look over contracts, look over decisions, really think about why it is that you're doing something. So, all right, Aries, that is your card for the June solar eclipse. Next up is Taurus. Can't believe I almost forgot what sign was next. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Solar eclipse reading for Taurus. Okay, death. The opposite side of your coin, Scorpio, right? Which is, you know, Taurus is all about life and fertility and birth. And um, it's the next sign after Aries, right? So Aries is the big bang. And then Taurus is the blooming and and the flowering of, of the, you know, the chemical reactions, the, the, the reactions that occur during the big bang, which is Aries, right? And so the, your, your, your opposite sign from that, which is Scorpio, is all about death, right? But not death for death's sake, death with the sake of rebirth, right? And so that is what I feel this card is trying to say to you, is that it's not just like, we don't just die and that's it. We don't just die and there's a loss of consciousness or there is this change for no reason or things are gone for no reason. Everything is regenerative, right? There is a cycle and a reason why everything has to go through a cycle. So right now, this solar eclipse is, I believe it's asking you all to actually reassess and to rethink your idea and your attachments to the concept of death. I feel like for some of you, that's gonna be very important, right? That you are gonna to have to rework and really think about death in a different way. That it's not this finite sort of end all be all. Yes, death is feels very final and it's the only guarantee, right? That we as living beings have, right? Is that we're all going to die. Um, that's, sorry, this is getting morbid. Um, but, but to change the relationship to that and say, okay, well, I will be recycled into the next phase. I will be recycled into the next realm. Um, you know, I will be recycled into the earth, however you need to view that. And so right now, some of you are going through some major changes, right? That are really bringing, it's not like a, it's not like a wheel of fortune or, you know, like, oh, transitions, like, you know, um, you know, that kind of a, you know, that kind of a, a sense of death, but it's more so like the changes feel tremendous. They feel overpowering. They feel as though they're very important. And what they're doing is they're calling upon you to also really reassess your own sort of idea and perception of death and to allow like you have to surrender to, to this right because as we talked about in your june reading taurus energy is not very porous right taurus energy is very solid and it's like a fortress it's it's very formidable right taurus energy is like i'm not think of earthbenders right for those of you who watch um like avatar the last airbender or who have watched it I'm watching it with like a sixth time this time around. But, you know, earthbenders, think of earth, they're very sturdy. They're not porous. You, you have to do a lot to get through to an earthbender, right? And so y'all operate in the same way, that you have to do a lot to penetrate through the walls of the Taurus. And, and this process needs you to be a bit more flexible and to be a bit more porous, right? The more you allow the transformation to come in, the less it's going to hurt and be painful and feel like death, right? So letting go of this is how I thought it needed to be and more so moving into, well, maybe it's possible that it could be different and I can be okay with that. It's not going to be easy, but it's possible. So re- recalibrating your ideas around death, recalibrating your ideas around transformation. And if there are any transformations going on in your life right now, really surrendering to them. Um, and I know that's like very generic, but uh, I feel like 
a lot of what's going to happen is you're going to have to really think about your mentality around transformation. And you may also have to look at ways in your life in the past where you have not been so open to change and it's like turned around and bit you in the ass. So this is an opportunity for you to do things a bit differently. All right, let's move on to Gemini. So we exit from your season and move into cancer season. I'm a cancer moon, so I like, you know, I, I can I can dig it, I can hang, I can hang. Um, Vedically, um, my Vedic chart, Vedically, Vedic, in my Vedic chart, I am a Gemini moon. Um, okay, so <clears throat> seven of pentacles. I feel like a lot of the same cards that were coming out or the concepts that were coming out for the mid-June to mid-July readings are coming out right now. So we have this seven of pentacles, um, and I feel as though a lot of what came up for some of you during Gemini or during Venus retrograde and Gemini was looking at your looking at how you deal with love, right? And looking at how you navigate love. Um, and what is also tied to Venus is like self-worth. Um, it's tied to self-worth. It's tied to how it's tied to how we feel we can make money, how we feel we can bring material items in, um, whether we feel we're worth that or not. Um, yes, definitely how we deal with people one-on-one, -on -one, how harmonious our relationships can be. Um, and what the nature of that might be, right? And so when we have um, Gemini, right? Venus and Gemini, right? That a lot of the times what that can equate to is Gemini being the social butterfly, right? And literally butterflies moving from one flower to the next, right? Um, and, and being very quick about it and being very detached about it and being kind of curious about the next thing is that people usually think Gemini's are like, they're just curious about what's about the next thing, right? They're just, they're just very kind of like, oh, this is cool here, but like what's over there? It's curiosity. It's not so much meant to be malicious. It's like, you got to think of like a little kid, right? It's not meant to be malicious, but it can be hurtful. And so I think what's come up for Gemini, for some of y'all, right, during this Venus retrograde period, is looking at um, what do you do in relationships when, because sometimes this, this period can be tough, right? Like, like I was telling Taurus, you know, they're extremely formidable and therefore have quite a bit of staying power. When you have mutable air, right? Literally like the most mutable sign of the mutable signs, right? A mutable air sign that 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 formidability and and um that stamina may not be there, right? And so when we enter when you enter into periods like this in your romantic relationships, it can become scary. Like, oh, like so We've done the flirting, we've done the, you know, chatting each other up, we've done all this, we've done all that, and now I'm in this state of, like, having to really see where the chips fall. Oh, my battery's dying. Having to see where the chips fall, yet, you know, my number one tactic is when I enter into this phase, right, and I don't really get what I want, or the thing that I get doesn't kind of match this uh, fantasy idea of like an ideal partner, then I just move on. So I think some of you for the solar eclipse in Cancer are being asked um, and advised really to be able to sit here, right? And especially if you are with a person who, and and and, and, and who is not fitting right your idea of who you thought you were going to end up with because the thing is is that i that idea is never attainable for a gemini that idea is constantly transforming is, and is extremely mutable right it would be one thing if they had this concrete idea and they themselves worked towards becoming that thing or like actually sought after partners who realistically could fit within the, but it's like even the ideals within a Gemini are extremely mutable and airy and floaty and you can't grasp them. So, you know, think of these pentacles 
as really looking at, especially in love, if you're feeling sort of stuck, okay, you're feeling stuck, but like, let's look at what you're actually really, what are these, think of these as qualities, right? What are the qualities that you're actually going for? Um, like, what are you actually trying to accomplish in relationships? Do you even know what your goals are? Like, what are your goals in for a relationship? Are you know, do you want to like, do you want to travel with somebody? Do you want to have kids? Do you want to get married? Um, do you want to have an open relationship? Like, what have you thought about for yourself that could realistically work for you rather than going for the next best or prettiest thing that's available to you? Like, what are, and like, what are the partners, you know, if you want to open a business with a partner, with a partner, or if you want to, you know, um, if you have specific goals that you want to do in relationships, cool. Then like, look at the qualities of the partners that you're picking and can those partners help you achieve those things? Are they compatible with your own long-term goals? Do you have long-term goals, Gemini? Like what are, you know, like what, what is, you know, cause Venus also brings up issues of our self-worth and a lot of the times, you know, um, an inability to commit or an inability to really, um, you know, kind of uh, just kind of being aimless a bit, right? And not saying that goals are like the thing that like bring us value as humans, right? But we are, we are goal oriented or task oriented uh, animals, right? And so, or mammals. And so, same thing. Um, and so uh, w with regards to self-worth, do you feel that you are worthy enough of having and believing in yourself to, to take the ideas, right? To take all the ideas that float around in the Gemini mind and the Gemini ether and pull them down to the, to the earth realm and to create, make them into material things, right? Do you feel you're worthy of that? And what are the moments in your life that you have failed to allow yourself to be worthy of that act, right? What are the ways in which you've just been like, I had this great idea, but you've made up excuses to not do it, but those excuses were actually like really masking like low self-worth or lack of belief in yourself, right? And I think that's a very air sign thing because we're air, right? I'm an Aquarius, Aquarius sun, right? Like I get it. It's like, you have all these ideas and you can live in the ideal realm and the, in the air realm for so long, but it don't mean shit unless you're willing to take the actions to create these pentacles. And those actions require that we believe in ourselves, you know? And so I think that is your message. It's a long message, but you know, where have you deemed yourself unworthy and kind of laughed it off, Gemini? And been like, oh, like whatever, you know? Where has there been a relationship where you really, 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 really actually vibe with the person, but you were unwilling to do the work to see where the work would take you? So good stuff. Okay, Cancer. <laughs> cancer for June, your June solar eclipse reading. Oh, we're already feeling it, aren't we? <laughs> We're already, I felt it like on the 15th. I was like, it's cancer season. It's cancer season. Okay, I'm gonna do one more shuffle and then we'll take your card. The Empress. Okay. So <laughs> this makes me, makes me happy because my partner's a cancer. <laughs> yeah, so the Empress. Um, hmm, okay. So the things that you have laid to rest I would say back in January, right? Which was Capricorn season, so about six months. Or even um, thinking about, I feel like a lot, of, a lot of us have been, a lot of people have been reflecting on, I think it was the 2017 eclipse that happened in August of 2017, and it was visible in the Western Hemisphere. I think this solar eclipse is visible in the Eastern Hemisphere. So we were able to see it here in the U.S. I remember I, 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 we, 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 you know, we did a viewing of it, um, a viewing of it in New Mexico here. So you're not supposed to actually like look at it, <laughs> but you can, there are tricks and things you can do. Anyway, back to your reading. Um, so even thinking about what were the seeds you laid to rest, right? During that, during the last 
solar eclipse that we, was it solar or lunar? I don't remember. There was a big eclipse, August, 2017. Um, and it brought up a lot. It brought up a lot for me. And I feel like it was a time of planting seeds. And so I'm just wondering if you all maybe want to look back at where you were at August, 2017. It's a long time ago. And I believe it happened in, it was happening in Leo. Um, yeah, it was happening in Leo, but I'm trying to think it was a lunar or solar because I think the moon was in Aquarius or something like that. But in any case, the Empress being the card of um, magnetism. So you all, whatever it is that you feel like you've been lacking, whatever it is you feel like you have been without, whatever it is you feel like you've been starved for, this Empress card serves as a magnet, right? This Empress energy serves as a magnet for you to bring forth whatever it is you feel like you had, you've not had enough of. Um, and so I feel like there has been a sense of lack for some of you all. There has been a sense of sacrifice in a lot of ways. Um, but I feel this card and this solar eclipse has the capacity to really bring forth many blessings for you. Um, and also blessings that allow you to, to still feel really empowered, right? That these blessings, you are not having to um, sort of succumb to the will of anybody else. Um, you are receiving these things outright as yours. Uh, what else is coming up for the Empress card? Um, Taurus energy, you know, thinking also think back to what were, what were your, um, what were your intentions during Taurus Center, during the Taurus season? What were the things that you wanted to get done? And now looking at this, what, where you're at now, what have you been able to accomplish? What have you been able to make happen off of that list? Um, so yeah, I think this Empress card is really asking you to, one, really take a gander at the things that you've been asking for. And if you haven't been asking for enough, ask for more, right? Um, within reason, right? Like, you know, um, within balance. But also if you've been in a period where you feel as though you haven't been able to have access to much abundance, that that is going to change. That is going to, um, you are going to become a magnet for the things that you need um, and that you, all, that you also want right now in this period. So I'm really glad to see through this card. Fertility for those of you cancers who are... Um, also be careful if you, you know, cause that is also um, a card of fertility. So if you're trying to get pregnant, great, like around, you know, this could be a great time around the solar eclipse. Um, if you're not trying to get pregnant, be careful. If you're not trying to get somebody else pregnant, be careful. Um, so yes, let's keep it going. I like that card for you all. Um, there's been a lot of change and change that you've just kind of had to like okay, I guess I'm just going to go with it. And that Empress card is giving you some stability and some abundance with that stability, right? So let's get into Leo. Leo, 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 Leo. Solar eclipse, June 2020. <laughs> oh, one more shuffle. Night of Brooms. <laughs> Night of Brooms. Some of y'all are feeling feisty and like you're just like, should I just fucking go? Right? Some of y'all are in this space of like, I think a lot of y'all, I've been talking to a lot of some, a, a couple Leos lately who have really expressed missing a sense of their independence, right? Either they're in relationships or they've committed to new jobs or they're, you know, taking care of, of loved ones during the quarantine, um, or they've just been in quarantine, right? And so there is this like itching of like, I miss my independence. I miss being able to do whatever the fuck I want. I miss, you know, being responsible for me and only me. Yeah, I can understand that, right? And so there is this sort of burst of energy that is threatening to sort of bubble to the surface and which would and which you all would you know take off like the knight of brooms which is the knight of wands in this deck um brooms are wands machetes are swords in this particular deck 
Um, and so there's also the potential for um, new opportunities to come in work-wise, I feel like. Um, and these opportunities are going to allow you and give you, afford you the possibility of working in a creative capacity. Um, I also feel as though, you know, also this card is a bit of a warning, or can be a bit of a warning, right? That this Knight of Wands, Knight of Brooms can sometimes be a bit hasty in how they decide to move and maneuver in the world. And that um, sometimes they can make decisions and later have regret. Like, oh, maybe I should have not done that or I should have thought about it. But also then again, you're a Leo, you're a fire sign, but you're also a fixed sign. So you're fixed fire. So making the really quick impulsive decisions for fixed signs can sometimes lead to regret and lead to regression if we're not careful. Because I'm also, I'm a fixed sign. I'm, I'm an Aquarius. You're, you're opposing sign. So, and I'm always very good at talking Leos off the ledge, right? Like, cool, that's, that's cool. But like, maybe think about it like this. Um, so... Yeah, for some of you, this is definitely an opportunity for new creativity, new opportunity, new job opportunities, new creative projects that are going to come in. For some of you, you're feeling really anxious and just wanting to pull the trigger on a lot of things. Um, we talked about a relationship potentially in your June or July reading where your loyalty is being tested, meaning you're really asking yourself, you know, like, man, I've been really loyal to this person or I'm being really loyal to the situation. Is it really for me? Um, is it, you know, the grass looks real, the grass looks real greener here on this other side, but you know, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I, I would, I would sort of, you know, be really mindful of that. I would definitely, uh, weigh out your options and ask yourself why you are feeling in this energy and is it the relationship or is it something else or is it right that but I think a lot of y'all are definitely in a space of like wanting movement wanting excitement wanting action and there may be some options right there may also be a knight of wands in your midst who can offer you this excitement um, but Knight of Wands, I mean, if you're in it for a good, for, for if you're here for a good time and a long time, good, do it, do it, do it, do it. But if what you want is a good time and a long time, I don't think you really need to be stepping into the, into the arena with this Knight of Wands, with this Knight of Brooms, right? Um, I don't, you know, it's compatible, right? It's fire, but it doesn't really seem to be too compatible with, um, what I think some of you are asking for right now. And like I said, if you was want a good time, not a long time, go for it. Night of rooms, night of rooms, go for it. But I don't think that's what a lot of y'all want. So moving on to Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Hmm. I, I become really um, like, Kind of pensive when I step into the Virgo readings or Virgo, the Virgo, you know, I'm like, hmm, hmm. I really, I, I really do like Virgo energy. People can say what they want. <laughs> I'm making it sound like the whole world's talking bad about y'all. No, <laughs> but I do, you know, I do have like both my parents are Virgo, so I have a huge respect for Virgo energy. Virgo solar eclipse, June 2020. The Magician. Good. I like this for you all. The Magician. Okay. So now when signs that tend to overthink or ruminate quite a bit, um, like Virgo, like Aquarius, like Virgo, like Aquarius, um, if there are other signs that claim to be overthinkers, please comment them below. Um, but sometimes when signs that overthink get this energy, it can feel like a burden, right? It can feel like I have the capacity to manifest right now. I have the ability to call forth and materialize 
the things that I need and some of the things that I even want. Like I have command of all these elements here on this table. Like what the fuck? Like, and so though the magician can be a great, it, it, it's a great card. It's a great energy. It can, I feel like for Virgo energy, feel like a burden only in the sense that then it kicks into overdrive this sort of sense of like, well, do I deserve it? Do I, like, am I making the right decision? What, like, what if I, like, maybe I need to get all these other things in order. It almost kind of creates more work for you, if that makes any sense, when you have this this magician card at your, at your beck and call, right? And for some of you, um, it's actually feeling easy and it's feeling good and it's feeling really powerful. But then, but even then, right, when you have on the other side of the coin, when it feels good and it feels easy, then that also kicks in this fear of like, well, what happens when it goes away, right? Virgo being the sign that can see 10 steps ahead, that can see 10 years ahead, that can see... You know, that if I make this choice now and if I put this thing in position here now, I already know how that thing within that particular position is going to look five years in the future. So let me not do it or let me do it or let me tweak it or here's what I'm going to need to do at year number two to make sure it doesn't fall apart, right? So you all are not just always minding the details in the present, but you have the capacity to sort of have that Sagittarian quality of like shooting into the future, right? Of, of seeing how your actions in a very intentional, um, a very intentional way, how they will see into how, 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 what will they will look like in the future. So, and I find that quite amazing and fascinating about Virgo energy is the ability to not only do the thing in the present, but to also know how the thing is going to look way down the line. Um, and so I feel like for those of y'all who are, have tapped into this energy, there could be a worry or a fear of like, well, what happens when like it's not here or what happens when it goes away, but I haven't manifested the right thing or what happens if the thing, if I, if, if the thing changes or if it's not, you know, actually in alignment with what I'm trying to do, it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, just go with the flow, right? Take a page from the Aries Cardinal, right? And from the Aries Cardinal book of, you know, I'm just going to do it and, trust yourselves, right? I think this magician is also asking you to trust yourselves with, if you've been given tremendous power or if you have been given the ability and the means to create what it is that you need to create, trust yourself. Know that it will turn out for the better um, and don't allow the, cancers overthink too, right? So don't allow the Cancerian wave <laughs> of wave to come through because with the cancerian wave of overthinking the emotions also get added in which can also be extremely powerful right and then create, can create this tug of war so y'all are good this is going to be a good moment for you that you can ride out you can ride the solar eclipse energy out into the cancer season and i think probably even going into going into leo and going into your season so we'll check back in about that magician uh, energy um, we can check back in next month or you know during during leo season for sure going into virgo season but let's keep it pushing virgo libra libra uh, libra solar eclipse reading june 2020 I always look the best in the Libra readings or like my Libra thumbnails look, always look the prettiest. Yeah. In fact, the thumbnail I'm going to use for this whole thing is from the Libra reading, at least, you know, on Instagram, I think. Enough talking. Let's pull a card for Libra. All right. Justice, there you are, showing up in your most glorious, glorious self, right? So, yes, 
all the mayhem has broken loose, or rather the mayhem has been revealed and dug up from the earth and laid out for all of us to fucking see. Great. Now what we need is justice, right? Now what we need are the institutions to come in, right? And to actually serve blind justice as it said it would, you know, all this time since the inception of this country, right? That's, I'm talking on a bigger, bigger scale. But for you all showing up in this moment right now as the justice card, I feel like there has been tremendous growth and transformation for some of y'all. I feel like a lot of y'all have um, sort of moved from this space of, um, for some of y'all, y'all have moved from a space of um, sort of allowing who you are to waver based on who you were with or who you were around or who you felt like you needed and you have stepped into your own power of knowing who you are, right? If you are also in a situation where um, you have been wronged or someone has lied or someone has cheated or someone has pulled a five of swords moment on you um, or a three of swords moment on you, that you will get the justice that you are seeking, right? And here's the thing cool, right? But this justice, notice how calm and collected this figure is in this, in this image, right? Justice doesn't, you know, necessarily always mean revenge. There's a difference, right? Justice means that you are going to get what you need. You are going to get the retribution that you need. And so sitting around and wondering if the other person is going to get, you know, revenge, a dish best served cold, right? If they're going to get that dish of revenge served to them, it, you know, it's, that may not happen. Um, you have to have an open mind for how you see justice coming into your life and making things right. Um, and that it isn't always about the other person getting what they deserve, but that maybe you get what you deserve. And what you deserve is to um, feel safe, to feel loved, to feel heard, to feel respected. Right? What is it that you deserve in relationships um, and in your dealings with other people? Because, you know, being the seventh sign of the zodiac um, being the sign that is all about harmony and beauty and, and one-on-one -on -one relationships and the interpersonal, uh, of how things go and flow for us, that there can be this subconscious sacrificing of the self that occurs, um, that you all are the glue that holds the friend group together, that you all are the person that when so-and-so wants to have a good time, they call you, that you are the person that everybody loves and respects and um, has and, 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 and regards so highly, but also is left to clean up the mess almost all of the time. And so I feel like this card is allowing you to be yourself, right? To be who you are, and to be who you are unapologetically and to be who you are with, without having to explain your choices or your decisions to other people anymore. Um, and that you, yeah, like this is definitely um, a card where there is no bias, right? You're unbiased here, right? You're able to look at truth as it is. The so You have the Ace of Swords here, the Sword of Truth. You are able, you have truth on your side. So no matter what situation you're in, you know it, I know it, the other person knows it, you have truth on your side. And so you have to just let them, don't let, you know, whatever, who cares what they do. All right. That's Libra. Scorpio. Okay, Scorpio, let's do this. June, solar eclipse reading. We are about 40 minutes in. I am going to timestamp these. Maybe... If there are timestamps, 
I was feeling rather industrious. If not, I'm sure somebody out there is feeling rather industrious. Okay, Scorpio, June, solar eclipse reading for, for 2020. Um, okay, you got three cards. We'll take them. We'll take them. Three of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, and the Six of Swords. Okay, so I mean, it's a very straightforward story. Um, I feel as though you kind of started out, right, with this work, work, whatever you're doing for work, whatever you're doing to stay productive, whatever you're doing, whatever, it doesn't actually feel like work here to me because it feel this feels like something that you either by yourself or with another person decided to build from the ground up. So some of y'all are in a, this space of kind of right here, right? But before we hit this card, the Eight of Pentacles, we were here at the Three of Pentacles, where you where you by yourself or with another person sort of put together plans to build something from the ground up. Um, and it was your project. It was something that like was very dear to you and that mattered very much to you. And that, you know, was not about you working for other people or, um, yeah, this was very much a you thing. And so now we are in this space with the eight of pentacles of really like di diving deep into the work, right? And I feel as though this solar eclipse is definitely going to um, bring forth some results from that work. And I feel like whatever this work has been, and if you're not there yet, just know that the work itself will actually be very healing and will give you the capacity to move away from and out of any tumultuous situations that you've been in. And you'll be able to take friends and family with you, right? Or a partner or, or your family, your kids, your, your, you know, your spouse, whoever with you on this journey. So, hmm. Yeah, I feel as though whatever work projects you've got going on, maybe you are potentially working in, in the um, in the mental health care field. Uh, maybe you are working, um, maybe you're doing like nonprofit work, I want to say even, but whatever the work is, there is this extreme, extremely healing aspect of it. Um, where it has the capacity to remove you from bad situations or it's helping you heal in a sense or you are able to create a foundation from which other people can move alongside with you um, into calmer and into, into calmer waters. So I feel like y'all's reading was straightforward to the point where it's almost kind of like, is that it? Like, really? Um, hmm. Yeah. I feel as though, you know, I think we talked about this in your mid-June to mid-July reading that there, you know, y'all have a really high tolerance for those tower moments. Y'all have a really high tolerance for just like, oh, like that's not working out or oh, this person said this to me or oh, that person looked at me this way. Like, let me just like, let me just totally undercut the tower. Or like, let me, like, let's just, like, fuck the whole thing. Burn the whole fucking thing. Who cares, right? I'm a Scorpio. Who cares? Um, and I feel as though y'all are moving into a, into a period, for some of y'all are moving into a new period, a new transitional period in your life where, you know, you'll still have that edge, right? You'll still be able to be like, bye, you know, and do whatever you need to do and let, and, 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 you know, let the bridges that I burn light the way, <laughs> you know, like, like light my path, right? But at the same time, there is this focus on, okay, well, if I want, I'm, I'm continuing to have, it's almost as if you're able to look at the areas in your life, you're looking at the areas in your life where these tower moments are like, one after another after another things are disintegrating all the time i build something up and it disintegrates i have this friendship and then it fucking disintegrates i have this relationship and then it just like implodes right 
And a lot of it sometimes, not a lot of it, but like you got to part in it, right? And that Scorpio energy is very, very, very good at riding the waves of the destruction of things, of, of the bridges burning. Um, and I think some of y'all are looking at, well, okay, so that was fun, but I actually want stability and I want um, a blueprint. I want a solid foundation in these areas of my life where I feel like I'm constantly having to rebuild, even though I'm good at that because that's my thing. You know, I should really only pull that superpower out when it's really necessary. It's not something to be abused, right? It's not something that it's like when Aquarians sit around overthinking, they're abusing their superpower, right? Like they're abusing their ability to go to the heights of intellectual whatever by overthinking, you know, the most mundane things. So you don't want to overdo your superpower of being able to like die and rebirth all the time for like the simplest of things. It's not worth it. So I do feel as though y'all are doing the work to really look at, okay, well, where am I constantly letting the burn bridges light the way? Like where, like where in my life is that become a normalized thing that I do? And being able to be like, well, I need to put a plan in place where I can actually hop in this boat and move away. So that's a more conceptual way of looking at this reading. For some of you, it is flat out, you know, were, you know, created an idea, got to work on it. That idea is now giving you the exit plan that you needed to leave whatever she situations that you were in before. All right, Scorpio. I like that. I like that for you all. I like that for you all. All right, Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Let's go, Sag. How are we doing? Okay. June, solar eclipse, 2020, cancer, you know, all the, put all the tags in there. Put all the tags in there. Maybe one more shuffle. We're going to pull your card. I feel really serious. Y'all are actually a serious sign. The Empress, same as cancer. Y'all are actually like pretty serious people are always like oh Sagittarius they're like so like funny and the you know like they're like the swinging dicks of the zodiac and they're um uh there is also a seriousness to Sagittarius that you know I don't know man I feel it I'm a Sag rising so I feel it and I see a lot of my Sag friends like there is a there's this very pensive name there's a lot of pressure right so we have the Empress here Okay, so, you know, Cancer also got this, this card. So you could be dealing with a Cancer, right? You know, relations between you and a Cancer could be budding. Things could be coming to fruition. Um, you know, y'all two could be magnets pulling each other towards one another. Um, uh, you know, it could be, a, it could be a, if you're dealing with a Cancer or with a Taurus, this could be a really, really beautiful moment for you all. This solar eclipse can bring clarity, right, over whether or not you want to continue dealing with this person, in particular this cancer. If you're on the fence about, do I continue seeing this person? What does this mean? What is this, how is this gonna move? How is this, gonna, how is this going to develop? I really feel as though this Empress card is saying, uh, is, is like a green light for me, right? Um, so other meanings behind the Empress card. Um, hmm. Well, I'm looking at the face, right, of the card. Um, I don't know. I'm treating it like it's a, like, look at my foundation. <laughs> um, she seems, you probably can't see it, but she's extremely serious, like I said, She's very pensive, she's alert, and she's vigilant. So yes, the Empress also brings forth abundance and makes us magnets, but what the Empress also, what the Empress can also bring, bring upon us is jealousy from other people, right? Jealousy being a thing that Taurus energy often plays with. Either it is jealous or it is receiving jealousy, right? 
Um, so uh, with abundance, right? Well, many more problems. So with abundance can come a need to protect that abundance and a need to be super vigilant of, of okay, like, cool, who do I have around me? Now that like I'm really riding the waves of Jupiter having been in my sign for the lot, you know, having been in my sign all of last year, right? And now that I'm riding the waves of really collecting the abundance that came with that placement and just comes with me being a Sag in general and being ruled by Jupiter, like what, like who's around me? Who do I have to keep a lookout for? What relationships are and aren't working for me? And like, let's keep it real, right? That like this Empress card is not just about being beautiful and being um, being beautiful and, and being fertile and being sensuous. And it's also, like I said before, Tor a Taurus energy is extremely formidable. You don't want to fuck with a Taurus, right? They can be slow to anger, but once the, it's very combative energy, right? And so with this Empress here representing, you know, for me and my symbolisms of, of, of tarot representing Taurus, that there is a need to sort of fortify and protect all that you've been able to create. And I feel like there has been quite a bit of abundance that some of y'all have been able to bring in. But with that also becomes, comes this fear of like, am I going to lose it? because I spend too much money? Am I gonna lose it because I actually can't trust this person? Am I gonna lose it because this friend actually really liked it more when I was like, ain't doing shit and wasn't shit, right? So, you know, I feel like this Empress energy is also a call for you being the counterpart to the Emperor, right? That like, we forget that the Empress is the queen of all the queens. She's the queen of all the queens. She is the counterpart to the Emperor. So for you all to really stand in your power and to really believe and trust and believe that you deserve all the abundance that you're being given. And that if you get a hunch, right, that somebody is not um, being forthright with you or is being fishy or is being a hater, just like they're gone. The Empress doesn't need, the Empress is not thirsty for company, especially not the company of people who would rather see her uh, with her face in the dirt. You know, so that's Sagittarius. That's your solar eclipse reading. Let's go on to Capricorn. Watch me have having forgotten a sign. I'm going to forget somebody. I hope I didn't. Capricorn, June 2020 for the solar eclipse. Messages, advice, guidance. All right, I'm going to take this card. Strength and this card kept wanting to pop out. Yeah. The Four of Swords. Yeah, it takes a lot of strength to rest. It really does. So, either on face value, you're dealing with a Leo, strength being Leo. Um, you've been dealing with a Leo. However, there has been a recent need for rest and silence between the two of you. There has been a recent need for a truce, right? Maybe you and this Leo were not getting along because they're coming out as strength. They're coming out in the sort of manifestation of themselves as a, um, a strong energy um, and an energy that uh, can exert force, right? So with this Leo coming out as strength, I would, rather than the sun, <laughs> um, that I would say that there's a less playfulness that you're experiencing with this Leo and more so a, a tug of war of the egos, so to speak, or a tug of war of the wills, right? Um, and the pride and the loyalty. And so there has been a recent need for rest to just call the truce. And I don't even feel like this truce was like agreed upon. I just like both of you were like, cool, like this isn't working out. We're not getting along right now. I'm going to take a nap. You can also take a nap somewhere else if you would like to. But I feel as though there is definitely a truce happening between you and um, it doesn't have to be a Leo, but a, a strong, formidable energy who is showing up in a way where they're taming the lion right? They're capable of taming the lion and they're not going to stop at that. So this is strong, whoever this is right now who's showing up, they're showing up as a major arcana and as strength. So they've got power that you're trying to contend with that I don't think 
you really are cut out for right now or you understand the capacity to, uh, to at which two things are happening energetically. So, um, and another way that we can look at this, hmm, that for some of you, right, you have, for some reason, I'm thinking, I'm seeing the devil card, one, because it's you, and also because I feel as though some of y'all, I'm not sure if we talked about this in your last reading, but in the May reading, which was a great reading for you all, um, I feel like there was still an inkling of having to contend with behaviors, ways of being, ways of acting that no longer serve you, right? Ways of being and acting, whether they're addiction issues, whether they're really toxic and sick and abusive ways of being in relationships to other pe with other people, um, you know, whether it's how you view yourself in relationship to your, to your value based on how much work you can do, hence this rest card coming up. Um, but I feel as though y'all are doing some really hard work. You're, some of y'all are really taming the lion and the beast within you um, and really looking at what are the ways in which I'm hurting myself right now? What are the ways in which I am causing myself pain? What are the ways in which I need to rest? Right. And so I would highly suggest that you take this period of time that you allow this solar eclipse to lay you out so that you can rest because um, this is simply a truce. It's not an ending. It's not an ending. It's a it's a dirt nap. It's a disco nap. It's you know, you're like you're taking a quick break, but then you're getting right back into the gauntlet with whatever this thing is. Right. So if you're going back and forth to like a relationship or a person or, you know, I feel like a lot of y'all are hitting a breaking point right now where you're taking, where you're forcing yourself to lay down in the dirt and be like, I'm done for now, but you're going to have to get up at some point and contend with what's left over. And we can look at that as we go into Leo season. So um, y'all will be fine. Just take a nap. And um, I'm, I, we'll get into it during the cancer reading. And I feel like it's really with it with strength being the card of Leo. I feel like things aren't really going to come to a head until Leo season. All right. Aquarius. Hi. Hi, Aquarians. I love you guys. Let's see what's going on for this cancer solar eclipse, man. Uh. <laughs> All right. Last shuffle, and we'll pull a card. Justice, again. Okay, so I feel as though, <laughs> yeah. Um, feeling heard, like feeling like, yeah, I was right about that, and I knew what I was talking about, and um, also you were wrong, right? And being being in a position to say that with like absolute like surety and like absolute, um, I'm trying to think of the word, absolute, <sighs> I don't know. But there is a sense of feeling like, I am currently in this moment a bearer of truth. I am currently in this moment receiving, right? And I think that there is also this feeling of like for so long, Aquarius energy just felt so down and out. And it just felt like everybody was dogging us out and like everybody made us look bad. And like, <laughs> like if one Aquarius did something, then all of us were pieces of shit. And like, it was just like a couple of years of feeling like, damn, can I catch a break? I remember reading a comment. Somebody said, being an Aquarius is like riding off the lot with a brand new Jag and like riding into traffic, right? That like, you feel as though um, you have, right? Like, you know, in your heart of hearts, what you're capable of doing and that you know that your heart is in such a good place and that you know that you, you know, have what it takes to do the things, but 
you just feel like no one's like you just, you just feel like you're running into roadblock roadblock after roadblock right and so my advice to you is number one right like if you are doing this whole waiting around to be seen kind of thing fuck it go out do what you got to do and and scream right make yourself if what you want is to feel recognition which you know cool ask yourself why like why like why do you like why um if you you know have a project that you really believe in right like i'm more so talking about things that like you have within your heart that you're like i believe in this thing so bad and you're waiting for somebody else to believe in it it's not gonna happen you have to go and do it you have to go and do it yourself um and so I feel like right now in this moment, there is also like this major turning of the tide, like within the collective that, um, you know, the those who have really struggled to be seen and to be heard like that, that the wheel is turning, right? The wheel is turning and those who have been ignored, those who have not had a platform, who have not had a voice, who have had their thoughts, feelings, ideas scoffed off and like, oh, like whatever, like, that doesn't matter. Like it is, you know, the tide is turning, right? And those people are, have the mic right now, right? So justice, you representing the collective and always being tapped into what's happening with the collective, right? Aquarius, like a, a little bit of our energy is always tapped in. It's like being a cancer, but like on a collective level in terms of like, like collective conscious empathy, right? That like all, our energy is always sort of tapped into what's happening with everything going around. We're also in the age of Aquarius, right? So I feel as though for some of y'all, the Aquarian ideals of humanitarianism and, you know, the and, and the people and, um, and the people is what matters and the collective good is what matters that we hold the truth of that sword right now right um we hold we yeah we hold this to be help we hold this ace of swords this is the ace of swords for me right it's the it's it's the, it's the sword of truth um so yeah, also this card came out for Libra too, similar to Libra. If you have been in situations where you have been on the side of truth, if you've been on the side of truth, right? Because this card can play either way. This is not a card that guarantees that you are going to get, are going to come out on top of a situation. If you have been shady or if you have been doing some fuck shit, the justice card is going to handle it. If you have been showing up in truth and in honesty and in trying to do your best, Justice Card is going to show up and handle it. It just depends on what side of the coin you're on, right? And like that's the, the great thing and the annoying thing about air energy is that it doesn't care. It's indifferent to who you are, what you look like, the sound of your voice, um, how much money you have. It's the color of your skin even. Like it doesn't like air energy air vibes don't care um this card doesn't care so it's your choice you have to decide like what side of history do i want to be on right now and what side of history have i been on thus far leading up to this moment very very a more general sort of reading for you all um i feel like cancer season is going to bring in some stuff that's a little bit more pinpointed so we'll get into that um in a couple of weeks actually with the cancer reading so bear with me pisces 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 this is our last one for june the solar eclipse and it's going to be tomorrow oh the magician as well interesting you also got the magician um, and the bottom of the deck, I felt the need to look and to pull the card eight of pentacles. Okay. 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 Same as Virgo, your opposing sign. Um, so I feel as though what's happening actually with this magician card is that this might actually be somebody else. Potentially this could be you all like tapping into that magician energy but I feel like this could also be somebody else who 
has also provided the sun is like way down so it's the light has changed um this is somebody else who is helping you to create work opportunities work environments that you really want to be in i feel like there has been not that Pisces energy has been aimless or anything, but just the Pisces that I have come across in the last eight to 10 months, I would say that there has sort of been this sort of feeling of like aimlessness a bit um, and kind of like robbing, right? Like a person will come into your life or a job will come into your life or a thing will come into your life and you're like, cool, let me grab at that thing. And you're just kind of grabbing at it. And it's like trying to get away from you, but it's like dragging you like while you're like latched onto it. And it's like, what's the fuck? Like, what are you doing? And we've all been there. Um, we've all been there, but I would definitely, I definitely feel as though, um, not, I'm not at all saying it's like riding on somebody else's coattails, but there has definitely been this feeling of like, well, you know, if, if they're already doing it or a feeling of like lack and belief that you can do it yourself. And so I feel as though with the magician also being one, right, that you all are stepping out into this space and this place of, of independence, especially with work and with your income and bringing in money um, that maybe you figured out, you maybe you've got some investors for a jewelry studio, right? And you're making jewelry by yourself now. You're no longer having to use X, Y, and Z studio. Or, you know, maybe you have managed to um, rid yourself of the idea that you really, 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 really need to be in a relationship, right? That this magician is like, fuck it. I'm, do I'm, I'm going out by myself, right? I'm going to do the things that I have to do by myself. And as I do the things, right, the cup is on the table, the magician commands all the elements. The cup is there. So you do have the capacity to command love. If you if if you if you really want to, you can have it. Battery's still dying. Um, but that you right now are in a space of more so creating the opportunities for yourself that I think you have kind of similar to Aquarius, where you have been waiting for somebody to give you the key to the lock or give you permission. I feel like the word for you all is permission, that you all have been waiting for someone somewhere to give you the permission that you needed to do the work that you needed to do. And the reality is that you needed to just give yourself permission. So for the solar eclipse, you know, if you are finding that you are still in your own way and waiting to be given the permission to step out and do whatever it is that you want to do. Ask yourself why. And ask yourself if you're ever going to get it. Because chances are you're never going to get it. And when you finally do get it, you're either not going to want it anymore. Or you would have given up on the dream entirely. Right? So I do see great things. I see, you know, also allow yourself to find the balance between the manifesting, right? The, the magician energy of like sitting back and being like, whoop like it's all here and giving your and also the elements of having to work for it too right that that at, that we all experience both right that we all have moments in our lives where we get to sit back and it comes to us right and the manifestation is like you know the the calling of the things in is very easy and then there's also periods of times in our lives where we have to really, really, really work for things, right? Where we have to really, really like, you know, grind to make shit happen. Um, and so, yeah, finding also the sweet spot that exists, right, between these two cards, between these two energies. All right, Pisces, that is it. Um, that's all for your solar eclipse readings. I love you all. I will see you next month for cancer season. Black lives matter. All black lives matter. Um, all lives will not matter until black lives matter. Um, and so once again, if you are a tarot reader out here on this, on the YouTubes or an astrologer with a platform and you'd be talking about love and light and you'd be talking about we are all one and peace be upon us and you know the collective well-being 
and you haven't said anything yet about what's happening, then there's something fucking wrong with you. Um, <laughs> and if you're making excuses for why you haven't said anything, I really challenge you to like look at those excuses. So I'm in a space of feeling, you know, not so forgiving because as a black woman, um, my safety and the safety and well-being of my brother and my father and my family members and my partner um, and my closest loved ones are at stake because of what they look like. So it's not a game for me. Um, it's not a hashtag for me. So if you have a platform, use it. Um, and if you don't want to use your platform because it's going to mess up how your grid looks or it's going to you know, scare away your followers. It shouldn't be your followers anyway, and fuck your grid. Anyway, I hope you have a great um, solar eclipse, and I will see you all in a couple weeks for the cancer readings.